Okay, we're still in our L6 start.ai document, and first let's make sure that nothing is selected. So we'll go into the select menu, uh, and if it's available, uh, choose deselect. And now we're going to create a new color swatch. So let's go into the, to the swatches panel, and we'll go to the swatches panel menu, and we'll go to new swatch. And then we've got the new swatch dialog box, and let's go ahead and type in some new numbers. I'm just going to hit the tab key and go down to cyan and let's put in 9 and then 100 magenta and 100 yellow and 10% black. Okay, so now we're going to check global. We've made a process color. In other words, colors made up of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And now we're going to check global. And essentially what global means is if we apply this color to a whole bunch of different objects on our artboard and then we go back to the swatches panel and change the percentages of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, everything, every object that had been colored with this color will automatically change to the new color. So that's what global means and I usually check global. So also notice how we can give the swatch uh, a name, a common sense name. Um, let's go ahead and call it, uh, instead of using the CMYK values, let's go ahead and call it uh, logo background. So we'll name the color lo logo, ba logo background. And then let's click OK. Now coming over here to the swatches panel, we see that the logo background color has been added. Now we'll select the Aqua logo again with the black arrow, the Select tool, and we're going to fill with a new background color. So first we make sure that the fill indicator is in the front, which it is, and then we just come over here to the Swatches panel and click on Logo Background. And now we see that the Aqua logo has a new color background. Let's also make it have uh, that selected object have no stroke. So we'll bring with the letter X to bring the stroke indicator to the front, and then we're going to use the shortcut for none. We're going to hit the forward slash, and now we see that the selected object has that red fill and no stroke. Okay, we'll go into the select menu to deselect, and we're going to come over here to the swatches panel after deselecting and we're going to go to the logo background swatch and double click. Now we get the swatch options dialog box again and we're going to tab down and change the black from 10% to 3%. And if we click preview we can see that because it's a global color if we check preview on and off, click preview on and off, we see the color on the logo changing because that was a global color, and so we can go ahead and click OK. So now we've modified the color that that object was filled with, and now we're going to go to the Swatches panel at the bottom lower left hand corner to the Swatch Libraries menu. And down here in the Swatch Libraries menu we've got all kinds of uh, color combinations, color palettes that have been made for us, and we can choose from different kinds of art history and other options, different color themes, color palettes. Um, but if we go t uh, to the um, Swatches Panel Swatch Library menu here and go to Color Books, this is where we can find uh, a whole variety of color models. Now CMYK and RGB are just two kinds of of color models. There are lots of other color models to choose from, and uh, one of them is Pantone colors. So we come down here to Pantone Solid Coded, we get the Pantone Solid Coded Library. And I'll just go ahead and grab the lower right hand corner, enlarge it. Now Pantone is a company that makes color swatches, they make printed color swatches, and designers uh, can choose from printed swatch books when they're choosing colors. Uh, Pantone colors are single colors of ink that are mixed at the print shop according to a formula that the printer at the print shop has. So let's go under to the Pantone Solid Coded Library 
uh, panel menu here and let's go ahead and uh, view by small list view so we get we can see the swatches and their names and also let's go to the uh, library panel menu here and ask uh, to see the find field show find field now we can easily search for a particular Pantone color so these are different from CMYK uh, when using CMYK process colors uh, we determine the combinations, the percentages, of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that are used. If we choose a Pantone color, we're just choosing one color of ink, and that ink is mixed at the print shop. So there are pros and cons, uh, but I will say that many logos use uh, Pantone colors. Okay, well let's go ahead and search for one. Let's type in, in the find field here, let's type in 116, and then we can see down here at the bottom, uh, I'll just scroll up, we can see that that Pantone 116 has been chosen, and if we click on that layer, that Pantone 116 layer, we see that it's now added to the swatches panel. So we come over here and we can see that that color Pantone 116 has been added. Now the C stands for coated, uh, coated paper, Pantone 116U would be uncoated, and Pantone 116M would be matte paper. So it just uh, refers to the uh, coating or lack thereof on the paper. So now that we're done with the Pantone Solid Coated Library, we can click in the upper left-hand corner and close that library. So now we have a new color swatch added to the swatches panel. And we're going to go to the swatches panel and change it to a small thumbnail view. Because I wanted to show you that uh, the Pantone color that we chose, the yellow Pantone color there, has a little bit black dot in the lower right hand corner. And that tells us it's a spot color. A spot color and Pantone color mean the same thing, a single color of ink. Um, and um, let's go ahead and apply that color to the artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the Q, the tail of the Q, in the Aqua logo. And I'm going to hit the letter X to make sure that my fill indicator is in the front. And then I'm just going to come over here to the swatches panel and click on the Pantone 116 color swatch and now the tail of the Q has been colored with that Pantone color and I'm going to select the words natural energy and do the same thing. Come over here to swatches, click on the 116 color swatch and now natural energy is filled with that color. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my black arrow to click and drag my selection tool to click and drag around the Aqua logo and that's going to select everything. And I just wanted to show you that you can change the stroke on a whole bunch of different objects all at once. So right now our fill indicator and stroke indicator both have question marks. I'm going to hit the letter X and bring the stroke indicator to the front and once again I'm going to use the shortcut for none which is the forward slash. And now none of the objects selected has a stroke. Okay, so we'll go under the select menu to deselect. And uh, I'm going to double click, well first I'm going to bring the fill indicator to the front, so I'll hit the letter X, and then double click on the fill indicator, and when we do that we get the color picker. And so once again here this shows us the um, percentages of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that are used that are very close to, but not exactly, the Pantone color that we chose. So that's one way to find out what would be as close to the equivalent in CMYK as the single color of Pantone. Now, uh, but what we do want to change here is the saturation. So if we uh, move the color slider here, with the letter S checked, we can change the sat saturation. 
So the more saturated a color, the more bright and vivid it is, the uh, uh, less saturated, the more gray it is. So we're just going to change the saturation to 90%. And then we're going to go ahead and notice that the CMYK values have changed. So when we change that saturation on that Pantone color, it also changes the uh, closest we can get to the CMYK equivalent to that Pantone color. Let's just click OK. And we're going to go back to the swatches menu. I'm sorry, the swatches panel. And then go to the swatches panel menu. And we're going to say new swatch. Now with that color, that new color that we have, uh, we're going to go ahead and name it stars. And click global. So what we've done essentially is made a new gold color, uh, which is similar to the Pantone color, uh, and yet now we're creating a process color. We see the color type is process. We'll check global as usual um, and click OK. And if we come over here and look in the swatches panel, there is a new color swatch right next to the Pantone color swatch. And if you notice, the new color swatch has a white triangle in the lower right-hand corner, but no dot. So the one on the left, the one with the dot, is the spot color, the Pantone color. And when a color swatch has a, just a white triangle in the lower right-hand corner, that indicates that it's a global color. The color swatches without the white triangle in the lower right-hand corner are not global color, colors. So uh, if we go with that color still selected, if we go to the color panel, we can see uh, we have an option, an option to change the tint on that particular color, the stars color that we created. So um, we can use the slider or type in 70%. I'm just going to type in 70% here and hit the tab key. And now we have a tint, or in other words, a lighter shade of that swatch that we just made. And if we go back to the swatches panel and go to the panel menu, the swatches panel menu, and say new color swatch, what we're doing here is making a new color swatch. Oh, we don't get the dialog box. Let me just delete the second one. OK, uh, we get a new color swatch that is a tint of the previous one, right next to the previous one. So now we have uh, a tint or percentage of that global color. And if we just hover over these colors, we can see the colors that we made. Just hover over, and we can see that's the Pantone 116. Um, here's the global color called stars. And then here's the global color called stars, but you'll see that it's got the 70% next to it uh, that indicates that's a tint or a lighter shade of that color.